Hey guys, welcome to my NHL 21 Owen Power Career Simulation here, where we are going to be jumping into franchise mode with EA Sim Engine and simulating the career of the most recent number one overall pick, Owen Power, as we are going to be putting him on the Buffalo Sabres and seeing how his career pans out. Again, we are going to be trying to stay out of the way as much as possible by playing with the Western Conference team and just simulating season by season to see what happens. And if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. So in the first season, Owen Power was going to be drafted in 2021. To get to the 2021 draft in NHL 21 franchise mode, you have to play through the first season. So, unfortunately, the Buffalo Sabres finished 5th place in the NHL and actually did good, unlike in real life. So I had to move a couple picks around to make sure that the Buffalo Sabres did end up acquiring Owen Power, which of course is very difficult because he was the consensus number one overall pick in 2021. So now that Owen Power is on the Buffalo Sabres, we can start simulating from the year 2021 onwards to see how his career pans out with Buffalo. So starting off the first season, he would be on the third defensive pairing with Colin Miller, he would be an 80 overall rating with high elite potential and a top 6 defensive role. And there you can see his stats with some really good overall range. He's got 88 acceleration and speed as well as aggressiveness, 87 defensive awareness, and some pretty decent shooting for a defenseman too. Of course, being 6'5", 224 pounds always helps. And Buffalo's forward core really looks good for this upcoming season as well as their goaltending with a UC Saros anti-Ranta tandem and net. So with Owen Power's first season in Buffalo, the Sabres move up one spot in the standings from the previous season finishing fourth place in the NHL with a 49-26-7 record for 105 points. Owen Power would put up 14 points with 4 goals and 10 assists in 82 regular season games. And in the playoffs, the Buffalo Sabres would be knocked out in the first round by the Boston Bruins in a 4-1 to series loss, and the San Jose Sharks would go on to win the Stanley Cup. And after an anticlimactic first season ending, Owen Power would increase from an 80 to an 82 overall rating. His stats wouldn't really see much of a boost here, but he would be making an impact on the Sabres moving forward as he would jump into the top four pairing, playing alongside Sammy Vatanen this season. The Sabres' offensive core would improve slightly after a good regular season, and this year we would see Uko Pekalukkanen starting in goal for the Sabres. So guys, unfortunately I missed the screenshots on this next section, but I believe the Sabres ended up qualifying for the playoffs. In the regular season, Owen Power would put up 10 goals and 21 assists for 31 points. He would end off the season with a minus 8, and the Sabres would get bounced in the first round as he would only play 5 playoff games. And again, it was just an anticlimactic season for the Sabres. So heading into year 3 of the simulation now, Owen Power would be an 84 overall top 4 defenseman. His stats would increase slightly again after another improving season and he would be the top four pairing second pairing left-handed defenseman behind Dalin and Yogi Haru. Buffalo's forward group wouldn't improve too much and neither would their goaltending but overall they were looking to put up a good season again. In the regular season the Sabres would put up a 47-30 and 5 record for 99 points and an 8th place finish. Owen Power would increase to an 85 overall putting up 9 goals and 20 assists for 29 points, as well as 75 penalty minutes in 82 games. And in the playoffs, the Sabres would beat the Lightning in round 1 in 6 games, and then the Florida Panthers in 6 games in round 2, before finally being swept in the conference finals by the conference finals team, the New York Islanders, who would go on to beat the Canucks in 7 games. Moving on to year 4, Owen Power would increase from an 85 to an 86 overall, still being a top 4 defenseman. His stats wouldn't improve too much, but he would move up to the top pairing finally to play alongside the Sabres' other number 1 overall pick, Rasmus Dahlin. The Sabres, again, would not improve too much lineup-wise, but the Sabres would end up putting up a 48, 24, and 10 record for 106 points for a 4th place finish in the entire league. This year would be a better season for Owen Power as we would see him put up 15 goals and 38 assists for 53 points 
as well as 55 penalty minutes, as well as logging 26 minutes of average ice time throughout 82 games. And in the playoffs, the Sabres would beat the Senators in round one before being swept in round two by the Florida Panthers, who would again go on to win the Stanley Cup. And after this year, Owen Powers' ELC would expire and he would be offered a six-year, $8.055 million a year contract by the Buffalo Sabres. Moving on to year six now, and year six would be a great year for Owen Power as he would increase up to a 90 overall and a top two defensive role as a high elite 22-year-old defenseman. His stats would see some more increase here, and uh, he's looking like a very, very good defenseman. Unfortunately, this would not translate through to the Sabres as they would only put up a 31, 47, and 4 record for 66 points and a 30th place finish in the league. Owen Power would put up 26 goals, 39 assists for 65 points, and the second highest point total on the Buffalo Sabres team at just 23 years old. In the playoffs, Buffalo would make it, but San Jose would win the cup this year. And Buffalo would move down from pick 3-4 to four in the lottery, where unfortunately they would not select a great player in Hennessy. So moving on to year 6 now, Owen Power would remain at a 90 overall despite having an incredible season all around. His stats would not improve much and neither would the Sabres lineup as it would stay relatively similar to what it had over the past few years. To be fair, they were paying players like Olofsson and Cousins 10 to $11 million a year and Uko Pekalukinen did decrease in goal. For the regular season, the Buffalo Sabres would put up a 25-50-7 record for just 57 points and a 31st place finish. Owen Power would tally up 18 goals and 35 assists for 53 points, as the Sabres would really not do well this year again. And the playoffs would see the LA Kings get a Stanley Cup this year, which was a bit of a strange one, but they were able to win every series they played in, beating the Leafs in seven in the finals. Moving on to year 7 now, we would see Owen Power increase to a 91 overall rated defenseman at 24 years old, maintaining that high elite potential. He wouldn't see too much statistical improvement. The Buffalo Sabres also would see a drastic drop off in their lineup as they were paying Darlene and Power both around the $10 million mark at this point. Their goaltending also would not improve too much and their forward core would stay relatively the same despite having a few 70 overalls in the bottom six there. And this season would yet again see the Sabres do absolutely terrible as they would finish with a 28-47-7 and record for just 63 points and a 31st place finish. This year Owen Power had 19 goals and 31 one assist for 50 points in 82 games played, but the Sabres were so bad that it didn't make a difference anyways. In the playoffs, again, Buffalo would not make it, but the Calgary Flames would go all the way this year, beating the Boston Bruins in seven games. Moving on to year eight now, and we would see Owen Power remain at a 91 overall rating at 25 years old. Again, not too much uh, increase or improvement on his stats. And the Buffalo Sabres lineup would get slightly better as they would bring in some players around the 80 mark for the bottom two pairings there on defense. The forward group would stay relatively the same as they would only bring in a few players that would make a difference. And their goaltending would get worse as Jan Bednar would be starting for the Sabres in net. In the regular season, the Buffalo Sabres would see a slight improvement from their last season, putting up a 34-42-6 record for 74 points in 82 games, but would still finish 27th in the league. This year, Owen Power would play 77 games, score 24 goals, and have 24 assists for 48 points. Not even high scoring defenseman on the Sabres, and obviously he's not going to win any awards doing this. In the playoffs, the Vancouver Canucks would win the Stanley Cup this year, going to seven games against the Pittsburgh Penguins in the finals, and they would walk away with the Cup. We would also see a 90-goal scorer in Trevor Zigras, as well as Matt Vemichkov scoring 77 goals as he is playing on the Penguins. Moving on to year nine now, and we would see Owen Power yet again remain at a 91 overall. No statistical improvement, and the Buffalo Sabres lineup yet again would not really improve. The only area where they saw any growth or improvement was in net with Cali Sundquist this year. And for records, the Buffalo Sabres would do absolutely terrible, putting up just 58 points throughout an 82-game season. I know it says 81 games there, but they did not win their last game. So a 25-49-8 record would have been their record. 
And the Vancouver Canucks actually broke the win record this year, putting up 63 wins and 131 points. So they didn't quite break the points record for teams in the NHL, but still a crazy season for the Canucks. And this year, we would see Owen Power improve slightly with his stats as he would put up 20 goals and 38 assists for 58 points throughout an 81-game campaign. He'd also have 72 penalty minutes, which is pretty high. In the playoffs, the Buffalo Sabres again would not qualify, but we would see the Canucks and the Penguins repeat, and the Canucks would win back-to-back Stanley Cups. So moving on to Owen Power's 10th year in the NHL, and we would see him remain at a 91 overall rated elite defenseman. Lineup wise, the Sabres would get slightly better as Conroy would improve, but Owen Power would still remain as the second best defenseman on the Sabres. Their forward core would not improve at all, it would remain relatively the same, and their goaltending would get worse. This year would also see Owen Power sign another six-year deal, this time at $10.885 million a year. This year would yet again see the Buffalo Sabres do absolutely horrendous as they would put up a 22-51-9 record for just 53 points and the second worst record in the league. Owen Power would score 20 goals and 38 assists for yet again a 58-point campaign, and this time he did outscore Rasmus Dahlin. In the playoffs, the Arizona Coyotes would win the Stanley Cup this year, and yet again, Buffalo would not be in the playoffs. But the Sabres were rewarded as they would land the number one overall selection in the NHL draft, and they would draft a franchise right-wing playmaker in Jeffrey Lopp. So 10 seasons into Owen Power's career now, we're looking at his stats. He has 815 games played, 165 goals, 294 assists, for 459 career points. He also has 499 penalty minutes. He is a minus 120 overall in his career. He's taken 2,958 shots, scored on 5.6% of those shots. He's also tossed 1,523 hits, blocked 1,007 shots, and is averaging 24 minutes and 18 seconds of ice time throughout the first 10 years of his career. So moving on to Owen Power's 11th year in the NHL, and he would remain yet again at a 91 overall. He wouldn't see any statistical improvement, and the Sabres lineup yet again would not improve by any means throughout the defense, the forwards, and I guess the goaltending would improve slightly with Bengoa there. But just around halfway through the season, Owen Power would become fed up with the Buffalo Sabres, and he would request a trade to a top-end contending team, and he would be traded to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for Cole Caulfield, Brant Clark, and a 2032 first-round pick from the Canucks. So with Owen Power on the Canucks now, he would have a total of 71 games played, 17 goals, 35 assists for 52 points on the season, and he would get injured there, as you can see in the top corner. For the season, the Canucks would put up a 127-point record with 62 wins, 17 losses, and 3 overtime losses. Meanwhile, the Buffalo Sabres would do absolutely terrible, putting up a 29-45-8 and record for 66 points and a 30th place finish again. But when looking at the Vancouver Canucks lineup, it is quite obvious that this team is a lot more solid than the Buffalo Sabres team Owen Power was recently on. And forward-wise, they are absolutely stacked. They have some amazing players in Connor Bedard, Shane Wright, Connor Geeky, and so on. And it's pretty easy to look good as a defenseman when you have a high-caliber goalie like Jesper Wallstead backing you up in the crease. And yet again, the Buffalo Sabres would move up in the lottery, moving from third to second place this year. So it's really good that Owen Power got out of there when he did. In the playoffs, the Canucks would get bounced in the second round after winning their first series in six games, but Owen Power would put up two goals, seven assists for nine points in the playoffs, and there are his other playoff stats throughout his first four seasons in Buffalo before, of course, the Buffalo Sabres were essentially eliminated forever from playoff contention by the sounds of it. So moving on to Owen Power's 12th season in the NHL now, and he would remain on the Vancouver Canucks at a 91 overall rating, playing alongside some amazing defensemen such as Quinn Hughes. The forward core would remain relatively the same as they would be playing some very high-rated forwards on the third line in Vancouver this year. 
Then, of course, Jesper Wallstead would be the starting goalie again for the Canucks. For the regular season this year, the Canucks would put up a 55-20-7 record for 117 points, finishing third place in the league behind Pittsburgh and San Jose. And for Owen Power, he would put up 82 games played, 17 goals, 46 assists for 63 points for what would be two points off of a career-high season. In the playoffs this year, the Canucks would beat the Oilers in round one in five games, but then they would be eliminated in five games by the Colorado Avalanche, who would go on to lose in seven to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Owen Power would put up 10 games, two goals, seven assists for nine points, yet again, same as last year. And we would see some notable names such as Connor McDavid, Jack Eichel, Miko Rantanen, uh, Vladimir Tarasenko, Brock Besser, and so on retire this season. So moving on to Owen Power's 13th season in the NHL now, and we would see him remain at yet again a 91 overall. Owen Power would yet again be playing on the top pairing with Quinn Hughes, and Vancouver's defense would remain relatively similar. Their forward core would also remain absolutely stacked, and the goaltending would yet again see Jesper Wallstead in net, backed up by Heinrich, who was up to an 84 overall. In the regular season, the Canucks would yet again win the President's Trophy, putting up a 56-21-5 record for 117 points. This year, Owen Power would tally 15 goals and 40 assists for 55 points throughout 78 games played. So definitely a dip in production, but really not that bad overall. And in the playoffs, the Vancouver Canucks would get swept in the second round by the San Jose Sharks after beating Nashville in five games in the first round, and the Dallas Stars would go on to win the Stanley Cup. In the playoffs, Owen Power would put up one goal and four assists for five points throughout nine games played. Moving on to Owen Power's 13th season in the NHL now, and we would see him yet again remain at a 91 overall elite defenseman. He would be playing alongside Quinn Hughes as well as some other younger defensemen this year, and the forward core would yet again look absolutely fantastic as Connor Bedard would remain with Shane Wright and a few other crazy good players there, and Jesper Wallstead would be in net. This year, the Vancouver Canucks would put up a 52-22-8 record, finishing second place in the league, losing out on the President's Trophy to the Tampa Bay Lightning by a single win. Owen Power would tally 16 goals and 51 assists for a career-high 67 points throughout 82 games played, and he would be the high-scoring defenseman on the Canucks. In the playoffs, Vancouver would go all the way this year yet again, beating the Vegas Golden Knights in five in the first round, then the Portland Pylons, who are in place of the Seattle Kraken at this point as the expansion team in seven games, then they would beat the Dallas Stars in six games in the conference finals before beating the Montreal Canadiens in five in the Stanley Cup finals. Owen Power would tally eight goals and six assists for 14 playoff points throughout 23 games played in the postseason. Moving on to year 15 this year, and Owen Power would yet again remain at a 91 overall rated player. This year, the Canucks would make some trades and improvements as we would see Owen Power playing alongside a new defenseman named Alexiev. Connor Bedard and Shane Wright would remain on the Canucks as well as Jesper Wallstead in net. And this year the Vancouver Canucks would put up yet another crazy record with a 63-13-6 record for 132 points and they would yet again win the President's Trophy. This year, Owen Power would see another increase in production as he would tally 18 goals and 54 assists for 72 points in 79 games played. And Owen Power would also finish fourth among all defensemen for scoring this year. In the playoffs, the Vancouver Canucks would make it to the conference finals before getting knocked out in five games by the Minnesota Wild. They would beat Vegas and San Jose yet again, and the New York Rangers would go on to beat the Minnesota Wild in five games in the finals this year. Owen Power would play 18 playoff games this year, tallying seven goals and nine assists for 16 points. And Owen Power would actually hit his highest rating ever at a 92 overall by the end of this season after the career year he just had. And at the end of this season, we would see the Vancouver Canucks extend Owen Power to a three-year, $12.925 million a year contract. So moving on to year number 16, and we would see Owen Power yet again remain at a 91 overall, playing alongside a very familiar lineup from the last few seasons with the Vancouver Canucks. 
The forward core would yet again remain the same with Wright, Bedard, Hancock, and so on playing there, and Jesper Wallstead would be in net yet again. This year, the Canucks would absolutely tank it, though, putting up a 33-42-7 record for just 73 points and a 28th place finish, and they would very obviously miss the playoffs. Owen Power would put up 18 goals and 31 assists for 49 points throughout a full 82-game campaign. And this year, the New Jersey Devils would win the Stanley Cup, beating the San Jose Sharks in Game 7 of the final. And this year would absolutely be terrible for the Canucks as Columbus would possess their first round pick, even though it would move down from 5-6 to six in the lottery. Moving on to year 17 now, and Owen Power would drop from a 91 to an 89 overall this season, and his potential would decrease to an exact top 4. Power would yet again be playing with a very similar lineup with Alexiev, Dowd, and so on on defense. The forward core would yet again be similar to last year, and again the goaltending would remain the same. And yet again the results would remain similar for the Vancouver Canucks as they would put up a 32-44-6 record for just 70 points this year and finish 27th in the league. Owen Power would put up 14 goals and 26 assists for 40 points throughout the season and would play the full 82 games yet again. And this year, the Philadelphia Flyers would win the Stanley Cup, beating out the Minnesota Wild in five games in the finals. This year, we would also see a ridiculous retiree, Nikita Kucherov, retiring at 45 years old, playing 1,962 games and putting up 2,058 points throughout his career. And at the draft this year, we would see the Vancouver Canucks trade up to land the third overall pick, and they would send Keeping and Owen Power, as well as multiple picks the other way to the St. Louis Blues and therefore getting rid of Owen Power. So moving on to year number 18, and we would see Owen Power decrease to an 85 overall exact top 6 potential defenseman at 35 years old now. His stats would see a serious decrease as his puck skills and shooting would both decrease drastically. And this year, the St. Louis Blues lineup would not be looking nearly as good as the previous Vancouver Canucks lineup, as Gortz was the only other really good defenseman in this lineup. Forward-wise, St. Louis was kind of all over the place. They had a few decent forwards, but not enough to really go anywhere. And in net, Plakanov was their best goalie at 24 years old, but just 82 overall. And the St. Louis Blues lineup would reflect in the standings this year as they would finish 30th, putting up a 23-52-7 record for just 53 points, and they would place third last in the league. Owen Power would put up 14 goals and 23 assists for 37 points this year, and he would play the full 82 games yet again. And towards the end of this season, Owen Power would decrease to just an 83 overall. In the playoffs, Owen Power's old team, the Canucks, would go all the way again as they would beat out the Ottawa Senators in six games in the Stanley Cup Finals. And after this season, Owen Power would walk to free agency as a 36-year-old exact top six defenseman, and he would be requesting $6.6 million a year for his contract. And in this offseason, the LA Kings would reach out and offer Owen Power a one-year, $6.4 million a year contract. So heading into year 19, Owen Power would decrease in potential to an exact 7th defenseman, still playing a top 4 role on the LA Kings, and he would be an 80 overall at 36 years old. His stats would yet again decrease, seeing his puck skills decrease drastically, as well as his defense, skating, and physicality. And this year, the LA Kings team was not looking very good, as Owen Power was the third best defenseman in their lineup. Forward-wise, Ido Iguchi would be their best player, and uh, this would reflect in the scoring. And in goal, Tyler David would be their best goalie. So this season, the LA Kings would put up just 60 points, going for a 29-51-2 and two record and finishing 29th in the league or 4th last, but as you can see, Owen Power's previous team, the St. Louis Blues, finished dead last in the league. Owen Power would play 68 games, score 17 goals and 7 assists for 24 points to lead all LA Kings defensemen in scoring. He would decrease to a 78 overall, and this year the Philadelphia Flyers would go all the way and beat the Canucks in 5 games in the finals. And finally, Owen Power would call it a career hanging up the skates at 1,521 games played, he would score 311 goals, have 607 assists for 918 points, but wouldn't even be the highest scoring defenseman in his retiree class. 
So other stats that you probably missed on Owen Power that I have assembled here was he had 1,025 penalty minutes. He was a minus 30 throughout his entire career. He took 5,661 shots. He had 5.5% of those pucks going into the net. He threw 2,830 hits throughout his career, blocked 1,883 shots, and played an average of 25 minutes and 2 seconds of ice time. For awards... Owen Power would only win one Stanley Cup with the Canucks. He would not end up putting up any personal awards, but was just all around an elite player throughout the majority of his career. And throughout his career, Owen Power would have a total career earnings of $161.6 million throughout the 19 seasons he played. But that wraps it up for this career sim video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And make sure to leave a comment for the next career sim that you would like to see me do, and I will get right on that. And until next time.